In this video, I'll be sharing with you guys how you can run a seven-figure business. Wow, that's really amazing. So hi guys, my name is Jan. I'm the founder of The Present where we talk about business, finance, and life-related matters. If you're interested about those topics, don't forget to subscribe and tap the notification bell so that every time we have new videos, you will get notified. Now when it comes to running a business, guys, uh, just to give you a little bit of a background first, we currently have two businesses. The first one is this, The Present, and second one is the digital marketing agency that we have in the Philippines. We currently have clients in the US and also in our city, right? And with the grace of the Lord, <laughs> we were able to hit seven-figure business in a short span of time. And that's also the reason why we want to share a video to you guys so that it will help you out if you aspire to have a business that's gonna be a seven-figure business in a short span of time and hopefully even more. Or if you currently have a business that you have been running for a while but it didn't reach that point. Okay, so that if you are in those situations, then this video is definitely for you. Now, the concept that we're going to share with you is very simple and simple to understand but hard to do, okay? Especially if you don't have any experience, especially if you don't know how to make it happen technically, okay? So, here we go. Four things. You need to set up four major things in order for you to have a seven-figure business. The first one is your operations, right? When it comes to your operations, what I'm referring to is your product and your service. Okay, your product has to be good. That's, that's just the point. Your product has to be good. Your clients, your customers should be able to find the value of the product in exchange for the money that they're paying for. So if they don't see, let's say for example, they are paying you 100 bucks in exchange for a certain product, but they don't see the value of it being 100 bucks, eventually you may get the first sale, but they may not come back to you because your product sucks. That's the reason why your product has to be good. At the same time, with the, when it comes to your service, right? If you're saying that you can deliver a certain service within seven days, right? Whatever that service may be, then you have to find ways to deliver what you're promising. That's operations, okay? That's also the reason why, if you notice in an organization, if you have gone to like any organization or businesses, operations has the most workforce, okay not accounting not sales not marketing it's really more about the operations why because these are the people who, who are doing the labor the the workforce technically in order for them to ensure that whatever it is that they're delivering to the market or they're promising to the market they are able to do it okay so if you have a good operations regardless of what business that you have you may be in the product business you may be in the service business we currently have both you still need to have a good operations but here's the catch there are some people out there especially the newbies or like the solopreneurs or the new new entrepreneurs is that they have a good product they have a good service it's just that not a lot of people know about it or no one knows about it that's the reason why you need to learn how to market yourself how to market your business how to market your product and how to market your service okay like what's the point of having a good product or service if people don't know about it so that's the purpose of marketing so you can maximize social media marketing facebook ads instagram ads youtube ads or like traditional marketing if you want to go to tv or radio it really depends on what kind of market that you're trying to get as well so if there is a certain kind of segment a market segment right if they are more classy or they are more sophisticated then you may want to use Instagram but if they it's really more for the masses then you can also use Facebook and things like that so you have to understand how you're gonna market it what platforms you're gonna use who are your target market who's your target market and how can you speak to them in a way that they would understand so the purpose of you marketing a certain thing is really more about promotion getting yourself out there so that people know that you exist right regardless of what product that is that's if you have a signage of your of your store saying that okay this is um, Jan's eatery you know, this is that's what usually happens in the Philippines right the purpose of that is for you to know is for the people to know that okay there's an eatery over there so I can eat there so that's simple marketing but the purpose of that is to, for you to promote that you exist okay now after you market a certain product or service or your business or even yourself right you need to get sales okay that's the reason why you're also marketing is so that when people know about it they would exchange your uh, their money 
for your products, for your service. That is a conversion. So if the purpose or objective of marketing is really more about promotion, then the purpose of sales is really more about conversion. Okay, sometimes marketing and sales people, they are like one person. If you notice in the business card, they usually say marketing and sales associate because the, the salesperson can also market and the marketing person can also do sales. But even if it can be done by one person, the point of it is that the objective of each of this department, of these departments, is actually different. So what, when it comes to sales, this is you talking to the client, finding a way to close the deal, whatever it is that they need, whatever it is that they want, you would find a way to meet halfway so that in exchange for the services or the products that they need, you're gonna get money out of it. That's conversion. That is why you also need, how to, uh, you also need to learn how to do sales talks or follow-ups or how to even deal with a person. If this is the person that you're talking to, like an alpha person, if you're talking to sec secretary or whatsoever, you, you have to adjust accordingly so i was able to learn this at a very young age uh think think thankful for that of course during network marketing days and i was also a salesperson for the past how many years and it was really helpful in terms of running your own business right because a business without sales ladies and gentlemen it, that's not a business if you're not earning any profit out of it you're just doing like a charity work in a way right a business one of its purpose why you started a business is for you to earn profits not to lose money in the process right so that's the goal but sometimes there are moments there are months that you're gonna lose money especially if the economy is bad but that's just the reality of things that is why if you have a extra cash from your sales you have to do your best to save it for the company which brings us to the fourth thing that you have to set up which is your finance or accounting department right so if the money is coming in, that's the, that's the goal of salespeople is for them to convert your, your prospects into clients, right? They're gonna get, you're gonna get the money in to the company. The finance has to be responsible for the following things. Cash flow management to begin with, how much money is coming in, how much money is coming out, and make sure that there is a good monitoring system and a good assessment system if all the expenses that you are using is for the business right so that when you have extra cash you can invest in more in your operations let's say you're gonna buy some equipment so that it will produce faster you may want to use the finance to invest in your sales team for a sales training in order for them to do better sales so that there is more money coming into the company okay so that's the purpose of the finance department so guys, a lot of people think that operations, marketing, sales, and finance, these are the essential parts of any business. If you notice, if you have a small, medium, or large size business, everyone, if you have a business, you need to have the, these things, right? Some entrepreneurs or business people think that they should act like solo, they, like they should be treated separately. Well, that is true. In each department, they have their own objectives and roles and responsibilities. They have to be working with each other, okay? Because there are moments, guys, here's the truth. And this is something that I just, I really notice in the business world. There are times that salespeople are going to say things that the operations team cannot deliver. Or the marketing team is gonna say that we can do this. This is how we're gonna position the brand, position the product or the service, but that's not really the case. Right? The operations team cannot deliver. And there are moments that the finance is saying that we are investing in this thing because of this, but it's not really an investment. It was a bad decision for them to use the money for that certain thing. And that is why you have, the, like there is an operations manager, the marketing manager, sales manager, and finance manager. They have to work together. And you, as the business owner, you are responsible to leading all these departments since you are technically the CEO, okay? So guys, if you want to run a seven-figure business, those are the four essential parts of any business. And the more, the greater it is in terms of how it's being set up, how the process is. In each department, it has its own processes, right? And it has to be intertwined with other departments, then the better off you are. So it's not limited to a seven-figure business. It can go up to eight-figure business or even more, right? And that's also what we're trying to do in our two businesses. We aim from seven figure and hopefully in the few years, it's going to be even like higher, right? So those are the, th those are the things that you have to have 
in order for you to run a seven-figure business. Now, question of the day. In your case, maybe you are an aspiring entrepreneur or you may be working in a business that's way bigger than seven-figure business or you may have a business that's running seven figures. What are your strategies or any takeaways that you would want to share for the viewers? Let us know in the comment section and see you in the next video.